Amazon calls them fulfillment centers, warehouses nationwide where every order is picked up then packed up with a little help from an unlikely cast of characters, as David Pogue will show us. Last year, we spent $386 billion on stuff from Amazon. That's half of all our online spending. And the bigger Amazon gets, the more unwelcome attention it gets for its workplace conditions. Working for Amazon is a highly dangerous job, much more than working for its big box competitors. They deny us good working conditions. Especially from employees like Jennifer Bates, who testified before a Senate committee. My work day feels like a nine hour intense workout every day and they track our every move. Now, Amazon points out that its warehouse workers make over twice the national minimum wage and get full medical benefits and a company-matched 401k plan. But this headline must have really hurt. According to the government, Amazon workers were seriously injured about twice as often last year as employees in other warehouses. Safety is our top priority with our employees. So in 2020, we invested over a billion dollars into safety and programs and processes around movement and ergonomics. This year, we are doing an additional $300 million investment. Kevin Keck is Amazon's Director of Advanced Technology. His team invited us to spend a day in the company's secret technology facility near Seattle. Clearly, Amazon wants to demonstrate that it's working on the safety problem. I understand that not a lot of TV crews have come through here. Yeah, none. None. <laughs> so why is it in your interest to show the public what you're working on? Because people can see that we are truly innovating and investing in technology to help our employees and their safety and comfort. For starters, how are the injuries happening in the first place? About 40% of our injuries are musculoskeletal. It's brains and strains and things that come from repetitive motion. Megan Huden is the facility's product development director. To study exactly how workers move, her team straps 17 orange transmitters onto employees of various shapes and sizes. David, now that you're in the suit, you can see your data displayed on screen. I tried on the motion capture suit too. Yeah, you see your movements. The one on the right is your right shoulder, and the one on the left is how your back is moving. So when you bend, when you twist, when you move side to side, it's understanding how you're moving. I'm sorry, did you say something? This experiment has already revealed one way that Amazon can reduce injuries, just by adjusting the handle positions on the crates, known as totes, that move Amazon orders around the warehouses. This tote's handle positions prevent you from lifting over your head. Oh, you don't want people lifting? No, it's actually much safer to keep the weight below your shoulders. Oh, okay. So let's try a tote that has a different handle positioning on that short side. Wouldn't this one with these holes be more convenient because I don't have to reach all the way across? I can just like that? Actually, no. The sensor on your hand is telling us that your left wrist is rotated much farther than what is safe for any amount of time. It's because it's underhand instead of overhand. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Robots play a huge role in Amazon's warehouses, which it calls fulfillment centers. Low rider robots bring stacks of bins over to employees who fish out what you've ordered and send it off to be packaged. But the human work involves a lot of reaching up and bending down, which contributes to repetitive motion injuries. Amazon's solution? A new robot, the big yellow one you can see here, known as Ernie. Amazon's new robots are named for Sesame Street characters. The robot uses its arm to select the tote, pull it off the shelf, and then the conveyance brings that directly to Teresa. Teresa is no longer having to step up and reach into a bin to get product or bend down and pull product out. What is it that Teresa needs to do that a robot couldn't do? Teresa has to discern what product to pick. The monitor tells her what she's looking for, but that container could be full of multiple kinds of product. Now, in most warehouses, safety cages separate the robots from the people. But robotics director Kevin Keck showed us some robot kind of, prototypes. Let's just stop right there. That can share the same the space with people. Kermit is an autonomous guided cart, or AGC, that we developed to help with this process of moving empty totes. Kermit follows this line. so. Let's test the safety system. I'll let you do the honors of setting the cone out on Kermit's path. 
Good luck with that, Kermit. And Kermit stopped. There was something in its way. Kermit sees that we're all out of the way. And off he goes. Crisis averted. For heavier cargo, Amazon will soon unleash a more substantial self-driving robot called Scooter. If you imagine going from an airplane to a trailer on the other side of a building, an employee would then push that cart across. We thought, hey, we can automate that. But perhaps Keck's proudest prototype is this little guy. This is Bert. This is pretty early technology. You're the first one to see it, as a matter of fact. And what is Bert carrying, usually? Bert will carry packages, totes. And if an employee needed to take something to the other side of the building, they would say, I need a Bert. And a Bert would come over and take it to where it needs to go. Bert doesn't need lines on the floor. It uses artificial intelligence and LIDAR, laser pulses, to see the world around it. I'm going to be somebody on my phone, not paying attention, and I'm going <laughs> to. Nice job. <laughs> Your thing works. It works. It's pretty great tech. <laughs> In fact, Amazon says that robots like Bert and Ernie are the most advanced warehouse robots in the world. But not because they get the job done faster. They're slower than people, but they're a lot safer. So we think that's a good trade-off. Now, to a critic, all of these robots in the room might seem to ignore the elephant in the room, that Amazon's injury rate is high, not because it doesn't have enough robots, but because the company sets too demanding a pace for its workers. Amazon told us, we are committed to giving employees the resources they need to be successful, creating time for regular breaks and a comfortable pace, and working directly with anyone who needs additional support to meet their goals. So far, what I've seen here today are robots saving people from doing more stuff. And is the end goal of that to get rid of the people entirely? No, we approach automation and robotics around working together with people and helping people and benefiting them. Since 2012, when we started first deploying robotics broadly here at Amazon, we've put in 350,000 robots. In that same time, we have over a million jobs that we've created and we're still hiring. Keck says that all the investments in warehouse safety are beginning to pay off. We did see in 2020 in the category of musculoskeletal disorders through programs that we had launched that we had reduced by 32%, which is pretty incredible. And what's the goal by 2025? It's to cut it by 50%, recordable injuries by 50%. Wow, and you're putting that out there, so we can come back in a few years and see how you did. Yep, I hope all the technology I showed you here today helps contribute to that success. All right, so uh, June 1st, 2025, this spot. Let's do it. <laughs>